So here with us today is Mr. Jeff Jarvis. He is the faculty representative for the ASI Senate. Welcome to the buzz, Mr. Jarvis. Thank you, Crystal. I have some questions I'd like to ask you. First, I want to know, what is the purpose of this policy? Well, the purpose of the policy is it's been presented by the uh, Vice President of Academic Planning, or Interim Vice President, is to make efficient use of classrooms that are not being used very often, if at all, on Fridays. So they're trying to spread the, the Monday-Wednesday classes out to Monday-Wednesday-Friday classes, therefore making more efficient use of the space, in their opinion. So the purpose is to just be more efficient and use what we have? Yes. What kind of classes are going to be affected? Is it just going to be like a specific type of classes, like just our English classes, just our math classes, or are any classes going to be randomly selected for this change? Well, I'm not exactly sure of exactly what classes are going to be impacted. I do know that it is not limited to one college or one department or what have you. Um, the big thing that, the concern that I have, because I'm from the music department, from the conservatory, is the fact that any large classes, large lectures, if, if the space is all used up on Fridays, there's a good chance they're going to send them down to our recital halls, our band rooms, our choir rooms, where some GE classes are taught now on Monday through Thursday. However, on Fridays, uh, oftentimes we have school groups come in that we offer clinic and workshop assistance to, and all of our chamber music, which is all of our small ensembles, rehearse on Fridays because there's fewer GEs, so they, they pack all the rehearsals into Fridays. Uh, so this would not only impact our space, our larger spaces, but if classes are offered on Fridays up here, then it takes our students out of those chamber ensembles. And as a conservatory, the chamber ensembles are a very big part of our program. Can you explain a little bit about the process, like how this policy was created and how it got to where it is today? Well, I'm not, I'm not privy to the actual planning of the policy, and that, that's part of my concern about this. Um, I believe this was done by the Academic Planning Office. However, I think it would have been probably a good idea to involve the students in the decision or the the planning process and to in, involve the faculty. In so doing, that would be done by the fa the Academic Senate rep representing their constituencies and the uh, ASI Senate representing the student concerns. And I think by um, incorporating both of those groups into the planning process, um, they wouldn't have had to make such a pitch to both groups to try to convince us that it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why, that's one of my main concerns about this. Well, my final question for you. Since the ASI Senate does not vote on this and they do not have the final say, and the Academic Senate does, what is the ASI Senate role in this? Like, what are our, what are our students doing? Well, the, the unique vantage point that I have here is that I'm faculty rep for the ASI Senate, I'm also on the Academic Senate. So the role, as I understand it, is that the Academic Senate will actually vote on this policy, which is supposedly a one-year trial policy of the schedule change. Then uh, the ASI Senate will not vote on this, however um, they're preparing, I should say we're preparing, a uh, resolution which um, lets people know what our feeling is on this or what the students feeling is. Uh, my whole reason, I did a presentation for ASI on my feelings about this policy and that's probably the impetus for this interview was that presentation that I did. I had concerns in both areas. Um, as far as the faculty, um, I think faculty are going to be a little dark on this policy because of the fact they don't want to come in on Fridays. I think the students are going to be dark on it because they don't want to come in on Fridays. Um, but the faculty will adjust. They will rewrite their syllabus to make it a three-day uh, presentation instead of a two-day presentation. And, and just like we had to adjust to the furlough days that we had during the economic crisis, uh, they will adjust to that. I feel they will adjust a lot better than the students will because the students are impacted in a way that they can't just get used to this new thing they have to do. They're going to lose work shifts and I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a lot tougher on the students that will be on the faculty. There will also be the matter of um, when you try to put the, if this doesn't work at the end of a year trial period, this two semester trial could turn into six to eight semesters worth of confusion trying to put it back together again. Kind of like Humpty Dumpty. 
Yeah, because yeah. once he falls off that wall, putting it back yeah, together is not right. going to be easy. And so this could impact students that are trying to get into a course but can't get it the year they want it or the semester they want it uh, because it's already full and because, you know, or they, or they can't take it because they can't get off of their work schedule on Friday. They need that work schedule in order to pay their tuition. I just think the, like I said, the impact is going, you know, everybody I think will complain about it at first because everybody's always afraid of change. However, the students are, are the ones that I think they're going to bear the, the brunt of the inconvenience on this one. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming on our show and answering our questions for us. It's my pleasure. Thank you.